I have to bring up uh, Joe Rogan. I don't know if you know who he is. I do. He's a podcaster, comedian, fighting commentator, and my now friend. And ivermectin uh, believer, too. Yes, that is the question I have to ask you about. <laughs> uh, he has gotten some flack in the mainstream media for not getting vaccinated. And when he got COVID recently, taken ivermectin as part of a cocktail of treatments. The NIH actually has a nice page on ivermectin saying, quote, there's insufficient evidence to recommend either for or against the use of ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19. Results from adequately powered, well-designed and well-conducted clinical trials are needed to provide more specific evidence-based guidance on the role of ivermectin in the treatment of COVID-19. So let me ask, why do you think there has been so much attack on Joe Rogan and anyone else that's talking about ivermectin when there's insufficient evidence for or against? Well, let's unpack that. Uh, first of all, I think the concerns about Joe are not limited uh, to his taking ivermectin. Uh, much more seriously, uh, his being fairly publicly negative about vaccines at a time where people are dying. 700,000 people have died from COVID-19. Estimates by Kaiser, or at least 100,000 of those were unnecessary deaths of unvaccinated people. And for Joe to promote that further, even as this uh, pandemic rages through our population, is simply irresponsible. So yeah, the ivermectin is just one other twist. Obviously, ivermectin has been controversial for months and months. Um, the reason that it got particular attention is because of the way in which it seemed to have captured the imagination of a lot of people and to the point where they were taking doses that were intended for livestock. Uh, and some of them got pretty sick as a result from overdosing on this stuff. That was not good judgment. <laughs> um, the drug itself remains uncertain. Uh, there's a recent review that looks at all of the studies of ivermectin and basically concludes that it probably doesn't work. Uh, we are running a study right now. I looked at that data this morning uh, in a trial called Active 6, which is one of the ones that my public-private partnership is running. We're up to about 400 patients who've been randomized to ivermectin or placebo and should know mm, perhaps as soon as a month from now in a very carefully controlled trial, did it help or did it not? So there will be an answer. <laughs> Coming back to Joe, <laughs> again, I don't think the fact that he took the ivermectin and hoping it might work uh, is uh, that big a knock against him. It's more the conveying of, we don't trust what science says, which is vaccines are going to save your life. We're going to trust what's on the internet that says ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine really do work, even though the scientific community says probably not. So let me push back on that a little bit. So he doesn't, he doesn't say, let's not listen to science. He doesn't say the vaccine, don't get vaccinated. He says it's okay to ask questions. Of I'm okay with that. How risky is the vaccine for certain populations? What are the uh, benefits and risks? There's other friends of Joe and uh, friends of mine, like Sam Harris, who says if you look at the data, it's obvious that the benefits outweigh the risks. And what Joe says, is yes, but let's still openly talk about risks. And he often brings up anecdotal evidence of people who've had uh, highly negative effects from uh, vaccines. Science is not done with anecdotal evidence. And so you could infer a lot of stuff from the way he expresses it, but he also communicates a lot of interesting questions. Uh, and, and that's something maybe you can comment on is you know, there's certain groups that are healthy. They have, uh, they're younger, they have, they exercise a lot, they get the, all, you know, nutrition and all those kinds of things. He shows skepticism on whether it's so obvious that they should get vaccinated. And the same is he makes this, he kind of presents the same kind of skepticism for kids, for young kids. So with empathy, and, uh, you know, listening, my Russian ineloquent description of what Joe believes, what, what is your kind of response to that? Why should certain categories of healthy and young people still get vaccinated, do you think? 
Well, first, just to say, it's great for Joe to be a skeptic, to ask questions. We should all be doing that. But then the next step is to go and see what the data says and see if there are actually answers to those questions. So coming to healthy people, I've done a bunch of podcasts besides this one. The one I think I remember most was a podcast uh, with a worldwide wrestling superstar. That's very nice. He's about six foot six and just absolutely solid muscle. And he got COVID and he almost died. And recovering from that, he said, I've got to let my supporters know, because you can imagine worldwide wrestling fans are probably not big embracers of the need uh, for vaccines. Mm -hmm. And he, want, he just turned himself into a spokesperson for the fact that this virus doesn't care how healthy you are, how much you exercise, what a great specimen you are. It wiped him out. And we see that. You know, the average person in the ICU right now with COVID-19 is under age 50. I think there's a lot of people still thinking, oh, it's just those old people in the nursing homes. It's not going to be about me. They're wrong. And there are plenty of instances of people who were totally healthy with no underlying diseases, taking good care of themselves, not obese, uh, exercising, who have died from this disease. 700 children have died from this disease. Yes, some of them had underlying factors like obesity, but a lot of them did not. So it's fair to say younger people are less susceptible uh, to serious illness, kids even less so than um, young adults, but it ain't zero. And if the vaccine is really safe and really effective, then you probably want everybody to take advantage of that. Even though some are dropping their risks more than others, everybody's dropping their risks some. 